everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I wanted to have just a bit of a sit down chat really about my autumn winter wish list. There are a few items that have been on my radar recently, things that I have seen on other people online and uh, gaps in my wardrobe as well where I've decluttered or sold things um, that were quite a few years old, that were showing quite a lot of signs of wear or weren't really my style anymore um, and hence need newer things to fill those gaps for the upcoming season because I'm definitely lacking some proper winter basics like coats, mainly coats but also boots and scarves and stuff as well. So I wanted to just talk you through what I've been looking at, what I think of some of the new bits and bobs from different brands as well as some more traditional pieces and I'm going to split this into three main categories I think. So the first stuff I'm going to talk about is stuff that I love, stuff that I've been eyeing up, I've seen on other people, I think absolutely fits my personal style but is not something I'm necessarily going to buy either because it's not very practical or it's out of my price range but just stuff that I was like in my dream world this would be in my wardrobe. Um, the second category is similar stuff so specific items I've seen from certain brands that I probably will end up buying that are on my more realistic wish list. And then finally, just some general gaps that I wanna fill in my wardrobe and maybe a few examples that I've been looking at um, that could fill those gaps well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Um, and yeah, I'll just get started. Okay, so the first item is this Lulu Studios cable knit jumper. Um, if you follow similar people to me online, um, you've probably seen this floating about the internet. It's made an appearance on quite a few of my favorite fashion, um, Instagrammers and bloggers and things like that. Um, it is a work of art in a jumper, essentially. It's a 90% wool, 10% cashmere cable knit jumper. I love the fact that the cable knit runs all the way around so it's even on the back as well. I think that is what sets this jumper out from a traditional standard cable knit jumper that we see everywhere and also what probably gives it that £345 price tag as well. I do think it's a stunning piece and I do think it is, if you're in the market for something like that, if your wardrobe is lacking knitwear, then it's something I would definitely consider spending a little bit more on just because it is so timeless and so classic and you're never going to tire of a cable knit cream jumper, I don't think. So it can be worn for years and years and years. I love the oversizedness of it. I love the slouchy feel. It looks super warm and super cosy. And yeah, if I was in the market for more knitwear, which I'm not, I've got plenty of knitwear and I've definitely got more Bit, like higher priorities to fill at the moment but um it is it's been on my mind a lot i have looked at it on netta porter multiple times but unfortunately i won't be buying it this season i don't think but if you're in the market i would go and check it out it's coming in and out of stock at the moment um in different sizes but you might be able to grab it um there is a dupe that i found so i was looking for similar items and I did find this jumper on Free People um, so this is their cable knit jumper and it's really really nice it does only have the cable knit on the front um, but I mean it's a quarter of the price I think it's £88 so it's definitely a an alternative for those of us who aren't willing to spend the £345 I don't think I'm going to buy it just because I'm, I don't need more knitwear but if I was on the hunt for something like this and I couldn't stretch to the Lulu Studios one then it's definitely something I would consider. Um, I will say looking at the composition it's 60% cotton 40% acrylic which is quite a common mix for more affordable jumpers. Um, it's still got you know over half of it's natural materials but the 40% acrylic obviously is a bit of a, of a shame. I'm sure it would still feel nice. I do like the fact it's got like the different styles of cable knit as well um, on the different parts of it. It's a lovely jumper. I think it'd be super wearable, but obviously doesn't quite match up to the Lulu Studios one. But like I said, it's a quarter of the price. So yeah, I think a good alternative over overall. Um, I think it's the best alternative I found when I was looking. 
So I will link both of those down below if you're interested um, and I will link everything I'm mentioning today down below as well. The second thing is definitely a dream purchase, definitely not something I'm going to be buying anytime soon, but it's something that again I've been thinking about and thinking about and lusting after, particularly after I saw it on, I think it was Helen, yeah Helen ha has this bag and she actually didn't recommend it in her bag um, collection, she said it was, there were a couple of issues with it, which meant that she wouldn't recommend it, but I am willing to overlook the practicality issues because it is so beautiful. It's the Chloe Darrell hobo bag, um, particularly in the small size. I think the medium size is a little bit too big, um, but the small size would be perfect for me. I love the braiding design. I just love everything that Chloe does. I think they're definitely by far my favorite luxury designer. They're pretty much the only designer that I regularly like the items from. And I just love this bag. Um, I think it might be discontinued. I don't think they make it anymore because if you look for it online, it's really hard to find. And the particular colour that I love, the green, I think it's called the Rainforest, you can really only find it on one or two websites. And I only actually managed to find it in the medium size, not even the small. So it's definitely a really hard one to find. Um, there are a few colours on this website that I found, so I'll link that down below. Um, and they're all mostly on sale as well, but even being on sale, they're a little bit out of my price range for now. Definitely a bag I would consider saving up for um, over a few months or so. I think it's a good bag. I think it would be a good bag, bag to add to my collection because of its size and the fact that you can wear it as like a shoulder bag or a crossbody bag. Um, obviously you can't ha hold it, it doesn't have a top handle, but I think it was it would be something I'd reach for a lot. I wouldn't say it's a fantasy self-purchase because I think I would wear it all the time and I think it would suit my style, but I'm not about to go out and buy it right now. But never say never, if I find one second hand or if I save up over the next few months and maybe come spring or summer, it might be in my collection. But yeah, not for right now, but I just had to mention it because it's one of those things that I've just been looking at like every few days going onto random websites and googling it and looking on Vestia for second hand ones and I just love the design. I think it's really unique and I think it's very Chloe and I think it's just beautiful in its design and it's something a bit different, something I've never seen in a bag before. So that is kind of it for things that I'm dreaming about but probably not going to buy. I'm going to move on to I've actually just got one specific thing that I've been looking at that I may very well buy, and that is the Cezanne cotton scarf. So they came out with these last weekend, I think, and they've been hinting at them for ages because they've been using them in their photography and their imagery for months and months, um, but they've not actually released them for sale until, until last weekend. And I love them. I think the designs are so nice. They're so Cezanne, they're so pretty and feminine, and they're actually really reasonably priced. I did think they would be silk, so I thought they would be much more expensive, sort of like the £50 mark maybe. Um, but they are cotton, so they're only £20 each, which I think is quite good. And a good way to add a little bit of flair, um, a little bit of colour and femininity to a quite plain outfit maybe. Whether that's tied around the neck, whether that's in the hair, whether that's on a bag, I think it would look so cute. Um, I love all the designs. I would definitely, I'm definitely more drawn to the floral ones. I know a couple of the ones are sold out already. Um, I think the green one is my favourite and that is sold out. And the red and pink one as well, which is also sold out. But I love the white and pink one as well. Um, I'll link all of them down below. But yeah, I love them. And I think, I just think they're really nice little additions to your wardrobe and they can dress up and make add a bit of interest to like a jeans and a t-shirt and a bag outfit and they can be used in lots of different ways so I was really excited. Okay so this section is slightly different in that it's just more general things that I'm missing from my wardrobe, things that I kind of need for the coming um, colder season, um, mainly coats. So the first thing that I'd really like is a trench coat and this would be more for obviously this autumn season and then spring as well. I've never owned a trench coat I don't think um not that I can remember anyway um and I always I've seen them loads all over Instagram all over Pinterest I think every autumn every spring they come back around and they're pretty timeless in their design um so I would really like to add one to my wardrobe I've seen a couple I haven't fully made my mind up yet 
I've seen this, the first one I saw was this Massimo Duty one. Um, it's their Voluminous Cotton Trench. I really, really like the simplicity of it. The fact that it has no buttons, no buckles, nothing at all basically. It's just the shape of the trench. I think it looks really elegant and sophisticated that way. Um, it seems quite oversized. It's quite long and it looks long on the model and I think that model is probably about five foot ten so I would think this might be too long on me which is why I haven't bought it but it is really gorgeous and I love the shade of the beige I love that it's more of a cool toned stone colour it is the perfect trench if I thought it would fit me well I'd probably buy it but I just am worried it will be too long because I think the Simo Duty stuff does tend to come up quite long um, but if you're taller I would say if you're like five foot eight and above um, maybe even five foot seven, um, this might be a really good one. If you like that simple look, um, where it's quite understated, but quite chic, um, and obviously, yeah, a trench would look amazing with so many things. I love the way they've styled it in this imagery on the Simo Duty as well. Um, the other trench coat that I was looking at was the Cezanne one. So I've seen this for ages, um, and I've never bought it because I think it is quite expensive. It's £225, which is a reasonable Cezanne price, but I think is kind of expensive considering like the Massimo Duty one is less than that. Um, but it is a really nice trench. It comes in three colours. I love the navy one of this. So I'm really looking for a stone coloured beige trench because I think that is the most classic, most traditional. Um, I'd like to add a little bit of a lighter colour in terms of outerwear. I do tend to steer more towards navies and blacks darker colours for my outerwear, my coat, so I'd like to add something that's a bit lighter, um, which is why I'm, I'm looking really for, for like a classic beige one. However, the navy Cezanne coat I think is perfect. If I was looking for a navy trench, which maybe I will be eventually, um, I would get this one in a heartbeat. I love this image in particular. I think the styling is so cool, so moody. I just love it. Um, and I think it, it will be good quality, it's 100% cotton. The buttons look nice, I like the style of it, I like the fact it's a little bit oversized, I like the buttons, all that kind of thing. So it's a really good trench and it comes in camel and it comes in khaki. I think the camel's a little bit too warm toned for me, it's quite a honey, like a uh, rich caramel colour and I'm looking for more that's one that's more on the stone beigey side. Um, the khaki is nice, I don't, I don't think I'd buy it but it is nice. Um, if you're looking for that kind of colour. I just think it's an overall, it's a good piece um, and a reasonable price, probably on the higher end, but still quite reasonable. The other idea I had was to look for a vintage or secondhand Burberry, because obviously when you think of trench, trench coats, your first thought is Burberry. And when I'm looking for something like a classic piece, like a trench coat, I am looking for something I'm gonna keep in my wardrobe for years and years and years to come. So a Burberry would be kind of top of the league and um, I know the quality of them are really, really good. Um, so I have been looking a little bit on eBay for a vintage one or a secondhand one, um, but I do want it to be in quite good condition. And obviously the vintage ones usually are like 10, 20, uh, 20 30 years old. So they usually are in quite a worn condition. You can get a really good deal, like you can get them for like a hundred pounds in that condition. Um, which I think is really good for a Burberry. But yeah, I want mine to be relatively new looking. So I haven't found exactly what I'm looking for yet. The second thing on my list is a winter coat. So a wool, a proper like wool or wool mix winter coat. I don't have one at all. Um, I sold, I did have one from Mango. I sold that because it was quite worn and I've just got puffer coats and like dog walking parkas and stuff like that. Nothing very fashionable. So I want a good quality, like thick wool coat to last me throughout the winter. Ideally, I would go for one from the Curated. So the Curated are a slow fashion brand. Um, I think they're only a few years old. They kind of came onto my radar about a year or so ago. Quite a few of the people I follow have coats from them, but they are pretty expensive. They're about the 400 to 500 pound mark. I love this one, the London coat in the bone color in particular. I love that color. I love the idea of a lighter piece of outerwear. I know it's not the most practical, but I think it's just, it kind of lifts an autumn winter outfit. I think we, we do steer 
towards blacks, navies, greys in the winter and I think having a coat that's lighter would really lift some of my outfits, um, my dark jeans, my black boots, that kind of thing. So this would be my ideal dream purchase but I think at this point in time it's just a little bit too expensive for me particularly for a coat in a colour like that where I would be so worried about getting it dirty, um, I'd be a little bit worried about wearing it places and I want it to be practical too for my lifestyle. I want to be able to just chuck it on when it's cold because I need it. it, it would be my piece that keeps me warm so I need it to be practical as well. So I was trying to find some dupes of the curated one just if you're interested in that kind of style of coat, because I know I am, and I, again, the lighter colour was quite appealing to me. So I did find a couple from And Other Stories, And Other Stories are a go-to for me in terms of outerwear and coats. I think their designs are really classic, timeless. They bring back pretty much the same coats year on year. Um, and I do think that they're a decent quality that they would last for a good five years, I would say. Especially the ones that have the higher percentages of wool. So I found a couple, they have this oversized wool coat, £175. Um, I really like the colour of this, it's quite similar to the curated one, not exactly the same, it's not as light. So it would be slightly more practical, but it's also got the tie belt, um, which the curated one has. Um, and yeah, I think it's quite similar in a lot of aspects and obviously like a third of the price. So a good option, they don't have it in my size at the moment. Um, Another one I found is this and other stories one as well. They're actually quite similar. This one is their voluminous belted single breasted coat. So it is single breasted. Um, again, in a very, very similar colour, that kind of oatmeal-y, greyish kind of colour with the belt. I really like both of those. They have a good wool percentage. Uh, I think they're both about 60 to 65% wool. Oh no, this one's 40%. Um, so not as good, but a lot of it is um liar cell as well so mm, not bad but for 200 pounds i would prefer a little bit more wool in there i think um the other place i was looking is the simo duty again a good place i think for something like a coat very classic um i found this one which i really like if you're looking for a slightly patterned one but something that's still quite wearable um, i love the gingham i love the oversized nature of it i think it's really beautiful um, this one is a good 65% wool, so I think that's pretty good, and the price is basically the same as the and other stories. So I think this is a good option, and the other one I liked from Massimo Duty was this herringbone one. And I don't normally go for grey, I'm not a massive fan of grey in general, but this really stood out to me. I think partly it is their imagery on their website is just so beautiful, and so it's just so timeless in how they style things like that would look good in absolutely any decade um, it does look quite 90s but it also feels really modern so I love this coat um, I think it's beautiful double breasted gorgeous herringbone uh, pattern and that's 60% wool as well so another good option that I will link down below okay so finally coming to the last item this is something I definitely need to buy sooner rather than later because I can really feel that I'm missing it getting dressed at the moment. And it's a good pair of ankle boots. Now, if you watch my Parisian 10x10, you'll see that I did own a pair of black Vagabond uh, leather ankle boots. They were my go-to. I had them for a couple of years. Unfortunately, my dog got at them and just completely destroyed them. I was so upset because they were still in really good condition. Um, I hadn't actually worn them that much because I bought them a couple of years ago, but obviously last year we were in lockdown for most of winter. I didn't really need ankle boots, so they were still really nice and my dog, yeah, savaged them. So I need to get another pair, unfortunately, um, and I have been looking about. I wanted to try something slightly different because every year or every time I buy ankle boots, every few years, I always go for exactly the same style. It's always black. It's always um, got like a, a mid heel, like this sort of height. So walkable for every day, but a little bit of height. Um, always leather, always the same kind of, usually like an almond toe or a pointed toe. Um, I just wanted to branch out a bit and try something a bit cooler. Cause I think those are really nice and they go with a lot of things, but they're quite dumb, they're quite predictable. I wanted something maybe a little bit more cool, cutting edge, fashionable. So I've been looking at a few options. Um, the pair that really caught my attention the most were this pair from Mister. 
So Nista's not really a brand I'd heard about before. I think I've seen them pop up on Instagram a few times. A few of the people I follow might wear them occasionally, but it's not something a brand I was super familiar with. But they're a London-based brand. Their shoes are made in Portugal. They seem like quite a small company. Um, so I was interested. They are quite expensive. But the pair I like are actually in the sale for £119, which I thought was about what I would typically want to spend on a pair of boots. Usually I go for Vagabond and usually they're about the £100 mark. Um, yeah, and I love the look of these. They're exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for a brown croc lace-up pair of boots with a mid-heel. And these popped up and I was like, okay, that is the picture I had in my head of what I wanted. Um, so I was almost going to buy them. And then I read some reviews about Mr. And apparently you can't return them for free if they don't fit. You have to pay to return them to Portugal, which can cost about £40 or something crazy. So that really, really put me off. So I went back to my search. Um, I found these from Free People. These cropped up when I did some Googling as well, the brown croc mid-heel boots, whatever I was Googling. Um, I love these. These are exactly what I'm looking for as well. They're perfect, apart from the fact they're £248. Um, too expensive for me, especially for Free People. They're such a generic brand. They're not a small independent brand that I'd be supporting. I'm not willing to pay that much for those boots. If they went on sale, if they halved in price or I got them second hand, then maybe. I think they're gorgeous, but yeah, I'm not going to spend that much money on them. If you like them though, they'll be linked below because they are really beautiful um, and they're exactly what I was looking for. Again, maybe a tad too high on the heel height for every day for me personally because I just don't wear heels, but I'd probably be willing to sacrifice a, a little bit of comfort um, if I could get them for a better price. So that was a no-go as well. Um, I went back to my trusty Vagabond and they do have these Marja boots, which I've seen in the black for ages, but I noticed they had a brown croc pair. Um, I do really like these and they're on sale, although they don't have my size at the moment, but they're not quite what I'm looking for. I can't quite explain why. I think maybe they're a bit too Western, particularly in the brown croc, makes them even more Western than the black. Um, and even though they are quite similar, um, theoretically, to the first two pairs, I just wasn't sure. I've just not completely sold on them. Uh, so I haven't bit the bullet on those yet, although they're still kind of like on my radar. I'm still like, oh, maybe I should try them. But there's just something about them that I don't think is 100% my personal style. Whereas when I saw the Mister or when I saw the Free People one, I immediately was like, yes, they're gorgeous. I love them. The other place I love to look at for shoes and maybe a brand you might not have heard of before, because I know I hadn't heard of it until fairly recently, is Bobbies. They're a Parisian footwear brand, and they do some stunning shoes. Um, they're quite small. Well, I say small. They're kind of like Cezanne, um, in that they're quite transparent about their the factories they use, the materials that they source, that kind of thing. So I like that about them. Um, and that yeah, their shoes are really beautiful. They do sandals, they do flats and loafers, and they do boots. And this particular pair, the Sienna pair from them, are perfection. In my eyes, they are so perfect. The colour of these, I think they call it cognac, is so rich, it's so lovely. And I just, I love the wooden heel as well. I love everything about these. They are not in stock in my size, again. Um, I have set an alert on my phone to tell me if they're coming back in stock um, because I love them. I think they are perfect. They're 190 pounds, so they are on the higher end. And mm, I, I would be debating whether I would spend that much on boots. But if you are looking for like a good mid-priced pair of boots um, and you are willing to spend kind of the 200 pound mark, I would definitely look at Bobbies. They have loads of styles, quite a few colors. A lot of them tend to go in and out of stock, I find, because I think they are pretty popular. Um, but yeah, if you like the Cezanne, Rouge-esque kind of Parisian style, you'll love Bobbies for shoes. So that is it. That is everything that is on my wish list at the moment for the autumn winter season. Um, I'll probably do a video in a few weeks showing you some of the items that I've got, what I've managed to find in these different categories. So look out for that as well. And let me know down below what's on your wish list. Do you have any glaring gaps in your wardrobe that you're looking to fill? So yeah, um, as I said before, we've just reached 600 subscribers. So thank you so much for that. If you're not subscribed already and you'd like to be, then just click the button down below and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it as well. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you.